Welcome to the report for Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about the freezing cold weather all over Australia. We're down in here in Victoria and Afghanistan. It's freezing, and we're going to talk about how how all this uh, really cold weather is a, a surefire sign of global warming. Stick around, with us. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the new the new big Bible is, is here somewhere on my shelves, and uh, I've just received that this all this freezing weather that we're now um, uh, dealing with here in Australia is a clear sign of global warming. Yes, that's correct. It makes uh, absolutely no sense. It's very much like war is peace, uh, ignorance is strength, and, and things of that nature. It's uh, it's just a gigantic nonsense. Um, you know, I mean, basically, uh, you know, about 20 years ago, I think it was the Age or the Australian or whatever said that there wouldn't be any snow in the snow fields you know what I mean you know so like in 20 years ago you should make sure you get up the snow or else you're not going to see it again but what we're seeing right now in the snow fields of Victoria and New South Wales are some of the biggest falls in their history ever recorded ladies and gentlemen in 100 years that's what you're seeing this year so this is obviously a clear sign of, of global warming um, Perhaps it isn't. I mean, have we ever considered that? Perhaps it's not. But it's interesting to actually read their propaganda. They blame something called the polar vortex, um, which I, I have no idea exactly what that is. Um, but I do know one thing. I do know that the, all the scientists who've got everything wrong on COVID the last two years know what the weather's going to be like in 50 years, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, that's a clear uh, that's a clear fact, obviously. So you can fact check that. Um, you know, I think it's just an absolute nonsense that you know um you, and this is the great thing that it really that always kind of stumps me and it kind of almost makes my jaw drop to the floor in relation to the climate change argument is that everyone and you know we just experienced a recent election here in australia where people voted you know the greens got a couple of extra senators and they've got their vote increased and people voted for labor it was called the climate change election do do australians really think that the Australian government can control global temperature, even if the worst hysterical um, out, you know, thoughts on um, global warming are true. That you know the planet is is doomed, and we're, within 20 or 30 years we're all doomed, or 10 years or whatever it is. Greta Thunberg puts it like three or four years away, doesn't she? Or something ridiculous. So you know, are we, do they really think that us, you know, basically freezing in winter, turning off the heater, which I've got on today here in the lounge room, you know, like, do they really think that's going to save us? No, like, it, it, it isn't. It's a nonsense, and. I just can't believe that people actually think that. They think, oh, gee, I better vote green, because whatever the Australian government does is going to affect global temperature. I mean, I don't know what percentage um, of, uh, like, CO2 Australia contributes to the, the world global footprint, but I've read somewhere it's something like 1% or 2% uh, Australia contributes. So whatever we do is meaningless. Uh, we could double our emissions, or we could cancel every single one and just, you know, sit around and go back to the Aboriginal lifestyle of, you know, just, you know, wandering around with sticks. Maybe they uh, lit a few fires. That wouldn't have been good for their carbon footprint. But just things like that. I just think it's an absolute nonsense what's happened. Um, you know, obviously the debate about climate change is, um, is complex and, uh, but you know, look, I do believe humanity is doing damage to the planet, obviously, but like, um, I think the CO2 is like a, you know, it's a typical globalist thing where they, they take the wrong information or the wrong situation, then they provide their totalitarian kind of fix and then at the end of it they'll wave their magic wand and uh, say that climate change has been fixed due to the fact that they've um, you know run a totalitarian government over us for the last 30 or 40 years you know which is net zero by 2050 which is again another nonsense i mean you know you've got this gas crisis at the moment you know um it's all over victoria and all over different states um even labor uh, kind of panicked about it and saying we've got to you know use more gas and you know keep our, more of the reserves because obviously we export gas keep more of the reserves for australians you know this is exactly what net zero is it's all about making it's like energy profiteering for the elites and it's um, just a scam. And also people, these left-wingers and these greenies who ride around on their bikes and everything and, and think that they're saving the planet, the level of stupidity, to think that that tiny, that tiny whatever they're doing makes any difference at all to anything. Is, is, it requires a level of stupidity that I find hard to deal with, ladies and gentlemen. So that's all I wanted to say here. On the report from Tiger Mountain, we're seeing inflation go through the roof. We're seeing lettuce. Lettuce prices are going up. It's like, you know, you're going to need to see your bank manager, your bank manager, and uh, yeah, talk to them if you want to get a, get, a, get a head of lettuce. So it's just ridiculous. Um, but, you know, this is just the beginning of the net zero agenda, ladies and gentlemen. And it's all rubbish. It's all rubbish. Um, obviously, there are things we can do to clean up the environment. I, I'm into things like getting 
plastic out of the oceans and removing plastics from our rivers, but Australia is a pretty green country. And there's a great article recently in The Spectator that said basically Australia already is net zero, and I agree with that. You know, compared with the amount of people who live here and the size of the nation, Australia already is net zero. And we should just declare ourselves we are net zero. And we should also build some more coal fire powered stations and some more gas plants so we can remain um, uh, warm during the freezing months um, of winter during this time of terrible global warming, ladies and gentlemen. I had no idea global warming was going to be so cold. That's the report from Tiger Mountain this week.